your expedition Get your expedition I Find out what you're missing on Get your expedition Have you ever been to a farm? You know, all the fruits and vegetables in a grocery store come from a place just like this. Well, they don't all look like this, but they look very similar. And today we have some cabbage and some broccoli and some greens, garlic way over there. And we're gonna see some other great things like zucchini and squash and radishes. So many great things. I think you're really gonna enjoy the fresh, fresh taste that you're gonna have today. the tomato or the peach? The peach. The peach was? Let me see. I don't know. I think it's kind of a tie. But... It's, it's like a salad place. It is a salad place, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. This is the school lunch right here. We're going to send it's, you. See, this is like the lettuce you've seen this? The lettuce uh -huh, and the tomatoes. Oh, yeah. I mean, mm. Mm. nice and sweet. It's like in the middle of sweet and sour. I like that about it. And it's natural too. Why don't we try to look for some more? Okay. Now the farm we want today had sweet potatoes, beets, radishes, and turnips. What do all of those have in common? Well, they were all grown under the ground. Okay. Those are called root vegetables. Root vegetables. Hey, can you think of any other type of root vegetable? Well, I guess carrots grow underground. They must be root vegetables mm -hmm. too. Carrots are too. What do you think? Onions? Onions and... Hmm, I know, garlic. Garlic! We are so thrilled to have you here, Chef Jeff. We have uh, had a ball with the kids. They have tried a bazillion different vegetables. That's a lot. A it, it is a That's lot. A lot. But they have tried probably 15 different vegetables. Wow. And things that they'd never eaten before. They did not know you could eat a cucumber straight out of the garden. Uh, the garlic was amazing. It was, and it was fun to watch their faces as they got that taste of garlic, and then that little bit of heat went through that. It was, it was so good. And you've got a cabbage right here. Yes. You pulled right out of the ground just now. Right and out we're going to do something with that. Going to make it really neat. 330 acres, a wide variety of crops. We appreciate you letting us come to Peachcrest Farms. We are thrilled to pair with Kitchen Expedition and uh, send quality produce up to your schools and your project. And um, it's just been a lot of fun to have you here at the farm. Well, thanks. You've been a great host. We've had a great time at the farm today. Well, you don't want to miss the fresh produce that we get out of here. It's delicious. Today we're at the Culinary Institute at Platt College in Oklahoma City and it's a great kitchen. It's a huge kitchen. This is where chefs come to learn how to cook. You guys want to know how to cook? Yeah. Alright, this is going to be great. They're going to get to make their own pizza. We're going to start with the dough, put on the sauce, then get the, the homegrown garden fresh toppings on there. It's going to be a great pizza. Now first, I'm going to show you what to do, then you guys are going to make your own pizza, alright? Okay, so you gotta pay attention. I'm just gonna run through it really fast, then you get to make your own pizza. So we're gonna start with just a little bit of spaghetti sauce. Now spaghetti sauce is what? Tomato. 
tomatoes. There's a lot of tomatoes cooked down over a long period of time with oregano and garlic and basil. A lot of spices in that. Now I'm gonna make mine in the middle here and I don't want a whole lot of sauce on mine. So I just get the sauce on there and put it in there. And then I love spinach, the garden fresh spinach. Just gonna put a little bit of spinach on there. Now our crust is made from value added products which is out of Alva, Oklahoma. Most crust is semolina, but this is hard red winter wheat. Makes a great crust, it's 51% whole grain. So it's a little bit different, it's gonna cook a little bit darker. I'm gonna put a few little onions on here, like this, and then some toppings, some mushrooms, love mushrooms on pizza, and then some zucchini, and a little bit of squash, and you see how fast I did that? Then I top it off with my favorite cheese, and then we put it in the oven for 12 minutes. It doesn't take long. Are you guys ready to do this? Yeah! All right, chefs, start your engines, let's go. First, we put the sauce on the whole wheat pizza crust, which is better than the white bread. Then we put the sauce on. Then I put on cheese and spinach. Then I put on, then I put on some of the mushrooms, uh, the squash and the zucchini. Well, I got the pizza and I put the sauce, then I put the cheese, and the, this is the first time I've actually put squash and zucchini on my, on my pizza, and I bet it's going to taste great. Well, first I put the sauce on, and then first I went right, right for the spinach after that, and then I put cheese on, and then I got some squash and zucchini. Well, I first spread all the sauce on my pizza, got the cheese spread on my pizza, and I'm happy I'm gonna try different vegetables on my pizza, and I really can't wait to have my pizza. <laughs> They're ready to go, they sure look good. Now I'm right behind you here, that's what you say in the professional kitchen. Now make sure that you guys get your parents' permission before you start cooking, make sure you have a full permission. All right, you guys ready to dig in? Yeah. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Fresh tasting. You can do this at home. It's great, easy to do, and something that's very good for you. That's great. Hello, everybody. I'm Yannick. And I'm Nola. We're here in our Kitchen Expedition Studios, and we're talking about the wild world of lycopene. Nola, do you know what lycopene is? No, Yannick, I don't, but I want to know more. Let's check in with Sophia and see what she can find out. Hi, Yannick. Hi, Nola. I'm here with Ryan, still trying to find out what lycopene is. I've been asking all kinds of people what they know. Let's see what we can find out. What do you think lycopene is? I think lycopene is a acid or a vitamin. What do you think lycopene is? Uh, a vitamin. A kind of plant? What do you think lycopene is? Um, I think it's um, a vitamin. What do you think lycopene is? Um, I think it is a vegetable. <laughs> Chocolate milk. So, do you know what lycopene is? Um, is it a kind of, I think it's a vitamin? Thanks for that. Let's go back to the studio. Thanks, Sophia and Ryan. Sounds like you guys had a lot of fun out there. I think I know where we can get the final say on lycopene. That's right, from our good friend, Moo Cow Ninja. Oh, that is a very, very good question, my friends. What is lycopene? It is pronounced lycopene. Lycopene. Lycopene is found in many, many fruits and vegetables the most common being tomatoes, but others include apricots and watermelon. Some people think lycopene is just for making fruits and vegetables red, but it is far, far, far more important than just color. Lycopene is produced when fruits and vegetables begin to ripen, which means they are almost ready to eat. Lycopene can be described with a very, very, very big word antioxidant, which means something that fights infection inside your body. Many, many adults like the idea of eating foods with lycopene in them because it helps them look young. 
even though they are not. This is Moo Cow Ninja. Everybody eat your lycopene. All right, we're in Professor Ricky's lab. Now we gotta be really, really quiet yes. to be in his lab. Now I want you guys, I want to ask him a question. He's very, very intelligent, but he's kind of eccentric. That's how Whoa. that's it. But he's very smart and he's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So let me get his attention. Then one of you ask him a question, okay? All right. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, Professor. Jeff, Jeff. Okay. Be careful now. Uh, Shh. Hey. Hey, I'm trying to get results for this man. Hey. Been waiting a long time. Yeah, I think he's been waiting a while. Oh, oh. So sorry. Oh. What do you want? Oh, well, we've been talking about some tomatoes. Yes. And does anybody have a question for Professor Ricky? Hey, Professor Ricky, is it true that if you that you can shine a coin with tomatoes? Oh, yes, that is true. I'm so glad you asked. Okay, he always has the answers for us. He knows day. exactly what he's doing. There we go. All Finally, right. Sometimes gets Boy, that's, dirty looking. that's some ugly pennies you have there, but Professor. I know, but we're going to make it look better. We make make it him look shine. Amazing. Make him shine. This okay. is going to work, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay so. With tomatoes. Now, don't, don't eat these. Okay. Just try this. Put these in here. Okay, what, what is that? This is taco sauce. Taco sauce. And it's a uh, mild. Mild. Yes, it's not very okay. hot. Don't so eat. stick your fingers in and rub on top, real hard. Okay. Rub all around. Will that work with just any kind of tomato? Well, let's do experiment to find out. Okay. okay, let's do it. So what we'll do is, first one, three ingredients in this. Tomatoes, salt, and vinegar. Vinegar. So we'll do tomatoes and vinegar together. Okay. And tomatoes and vinegar together. Let one of the children rub all okay. those out. Okay, don't you rub that. See and if that works. Get that in there. We'll do tomatoes and salt together. Salt. Doesn't and matter. Stir that up and then. Okay, who's going to do that? You want to do that? Those. All right. I'll do the last one. And then okay. we'll do vinegar. Okay. And salt. Okay. And stir up real stir good. Stir that up real well. And use this. Okay. And we will see which one does better. All right. All right. Now there's. This is the salt and the vinegar. This is salt and vinegar. Let's see one of yours. Okay, and that is the tomato this is paste. This tomato paste and vinegar. Okay. Not bad. And let's see the salt and tomato paste. And you see, it looks like tomato paste and vinegar number one. Number one. And number two, vinegar and salt. And okay. number three. The just salt and the tomato paste. So that the, this gets it the shiniest. Yes, yes. Why is that? Uh, it's because it's very complicated, Jeff. Uh, I don't want to hurt your Make it easy for brain, me. Okay. But make it basically, easy it has a chemical reaction and it re breaks on the ions and they reconnect and then they scrub off, make something that will all, scrub off the All stuff. of that's happening while we're doing Yes, it. yes, yes. There's a co the copper lets go of some ions and the uh, vinegar, add some ions, connect together, and takes off the crud. So this is tomato paste. And vinegar. And vinegar. Yes. This is very easy to do. It's not hard if, I mean, if you need to shine your coins at home, but it does that. Now, you've got to have copper inside of you to do this. What do you guys think of that? It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Does, does that answer your question? Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Well, Professor Ricky, thank you very much. Go on back oh, to your work. You. Go on back to your work. Try not to All right. Me anymore. We'll check with him later on. Boy, that's fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh man, did you know it would do that? This is pretty cool. All right, we're gonna cook something really cool today. It's cucumber sandwich. Now, how crazy is that? I know, you guys are looking a little confused. It's, it's kind of crazy, but to me, it's one of the freshest tasting sandwiches you can have. It's very easy to do. So our ingredients are very, very basic. We have whole grain bread. We have cream cheese spread. Now that has a little bit of flavoring to it that you buy at the grocery store. Uh, cucumbers from the garden, we pick those. And then onions from the garden. And then spinach from the garden. And it goes from the garden to your plate. Now this is very, very easy to do. 
you guys can do this real easy. Now, several things you will have to do to get ready is one, we'll have to peel the cucumber. Now, peeling's not a hard thing, but always get your parents' permission before you do it. Now, as I've said before, I'm left-handed, so I kind of peel down this way because that's kind of the way that the peelers are made. And this is a really good farm fresh cucumber and I can smell it right now. And then we get those peelings out of the way. I don't always peel the cucumbers, but a lot of times in something like this, it's just better this way. Okay, we'll get around the edges. Here we go. And then I'm gonna get uh, permission to use the knife from our parents. I'll just take the ends off. And then as we've talked about before, we use the bevel of the knife, we put it on the table, and then we kind of just move it through. A lot of chefs will just chop really fast and that's when they're comfortable doing that. I kind of like to just be methodical and just do it this way. Very easy to do. Had that cucumber cut really quick. Now I put a little bit of dill weed on the cucumbers. That just kind of spices it up a little bit, kind of mix it up in there. Very, very, very tasty just a good complement of flavor. Okay, are you guys ready to make your own sandwiches? Yes. Yeah. All right, so remember, whole grain bread, cream cheese on one side, space around the cucumbers. If you want onions, put onions on there, top it off with spinach. We're ready to do a very, very fresh tasting sandwiches. Let's go to town, we're ready to cook. Well, first Seth Jeff cut our fresh cucumbers, put them in dill. So we got the whole wheat bread, then we spread the cream cheese on it, and then um, then I then I put the spinach stuff on it. I didn't like onions, so I didn't put it on it. We put some cucumbers, onions, and spinach, and we ate it. It was delicious. Then we dug in. It was really awesome, and it took like under a minute. Now, how good is that? Ah, fresh tasting vegetables from the farm to the plate. Really easy to do, and it's a healthy snack. What a great day we've had. This has been wonderful. We've been at the Culinary Institute at Platt College in Oklahoma City. Appreciate them letting us come in and invade their kitchen. We had a great day today. What do you guys think? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and remember, you can cook this at home too. It's so easy. All right, I think I'm gonna make me one right here. We're here at the garden cam, and it's just like what it says. It's a camera in the garden, and it stays there all the time and just watches things grow. And today we're talking about something called soil. You guys know what soil is? Yeah. That's some good stuff there. That's millions of years worth of good stuff. Now there's over 70,000 different topsoils, but we only know of a few of them in this part of the country. The soil is something that's very important for the plant to grow. In order for this plant to grow, it needs the nutrients from the soil. So this is like the food that it gets with the soil. Some pretty good stuff here. You guys want to bite? Sure. Okay. Uh, it's good stuff. Now the soil has all the nutrients that helps the plants grow, that makes them into big, beautiful types of plants like this, and you have to have them. The thing is about soil is about the half inch or quarter inch is what we call topsoil and that topsoil is decomposing plants and animals right here that just turns over and over and over and has all of the nutrients that we get. So that's the way it is in the garden today. I hope you enjoyed that. Now we've got to figure out how we got to get these into the soil and grow really, really big plants. Pretty cool stuff. Now let's play in the dirt. Come on guys. Oh boy, we did a lot of cooking today, didn't we? Yes. Oh man, you guys did a great job. We cooked a lot of neat things, and then we learned how tomatoes and peppers and onions and spinach and all that grows. What is that red stuff that Moon Ninja Cow Chef told us about in tomatoes? Do you have any idea? Lycopene. Lycopene, and he told us about that. And then, what was you guys' favorite thing to cook today? Making pizzas. Making good, pizzas. good pizzas. So good. Well, we're always having a great time. It's always fun on Kitchen Exploration. See you next time.
I'm a tomato. Just a tomato. There are times when I don't know what I really am. Am I an F or am I a V? It's time to take a stand. I have seeds and a fleshy skin. The flavor is really grand. Doesn't matter if an F or a V. Just throw me in the pan. F or a V. What will it be? F or a V. What will it be? I'm a tomato. Just a tomato. Sometimes I taste savory. Sometimes I taste sweet. You can toss me in a salad or cook me with meat. I've been told that I am a bee when I'm cooked to eat. They also say that I'm an F because I have big seeds. F or a V. What will it be? F or a V. What will it be? It doesn't matter to me. Nope, not at all. Kitchen expedition. Kitchen expedition. Find out what you're missing on a kitchen. 